Alright guys, today I'm going to do a little video on outside corner welding. Uh, last night I was out here in the shop and a friend of mine said they wanted like a, a strong lock box type thing to put, you know, valuables and stuff like that in. So I was out here last night, it was probably about 1 o'clock, and I started to make this box and I thought, you know, I'm probably going to do some outside corner welds on this because I really like the way that outside corner welds fit up and when you're done you get a nice rounded appeal. Another advantage of the outside corner weld is it also allows you to get deep penetration without grinding a bevel on it. So, I tacked up this box and I thought, you know what guys, that'd be an excellent opportunity to show some outside corner welding to all the fine folks on YouTube. So I went ahead and tacked this thing up. Um, basically all you guys missed that wasn't on video was using the oxypropane torch, cutting out these plates uh, for this box, which I'm, I'm pretty impressed by the way it all turned out because sometimes when you cut with propane, you know, you'll get bad fit up, like here. That could pose a little challenge to weld just because when I cut, my lines weren't perfectly straight. Um, this would have been an awesome, awesome thing to have a shear for, but you don't always have a shear, and I have a torch, so I went ahead and cut it. Um, if we get into too much trouble on these big gaps, we might just fill them in a little bit with the MIG and then run over them. I did tack all this up with the MIG welder, just, it's just a lot easier when you're trying to do it. Another little um, trick thing that's kind of nice to have on hand for setting up corner joints like that is one of these uh, welding magnets. All right, these things are really cheap. I think I got this one at Harbor Freight for a couple bucks. But what it allows you to do is to stick it right to the metal and then slide your piece up against it and it'll hold it at a perfect 90 degree angle and give you a chance to tack it. So this is just a neat little tool to have in your toolbox. Um, I, I don't use it a ton because it's not really strong, but for smaller things like this, it really works awesome. So I think what we're going to do on this today is run some of uh, these Hobart 7018 eighth inch electrodes. Um, I would really rather run a 3 16 but I'm running low on those so we're going to try the eighth inch. And hopefully it doesn't put too much heat into the metal and burn through but uh, we'll get this thing set up and see what happens. Alright guys I got the uh, OR turned up to about 105 to 108 amps. Eighth inch 7018. Outside corner well. Here we go. Sorry guys, that one got bumped a little bit. My lead was wrapped around the camera. But I'm just gonna clean this one up. And then go ahead and finish welding this thing up. Another thing before you start welding on something like this, you wanna make sure you got it tacked up good and stiff. Otherwise it's, it's gonna pull your project right apart and you're gonna be mad because you're not gonna get that fit up the same. So make sure you got some good hefty tacks. I like to put my tacks on the inside, even though I won't go to clean them up. Thank you. 
Alright guys, so with that welded all the way around, I'm just going to take my grinder and go and clean up all these kind of rough corners. Alright, but you can see how that joint got filled out real nice. Now if this was going to be for strength, I would probably go ahead and put another pass on some of those and fill them out the rest of the way. But it's obviously going to be plenty strong. Uh, when you're making little lock boxes and things like this, guys, this metal is, is really way heavier than what you ever need. I mean, if you think of someone trying to get into this, it's going to be like impossible. Now, another thing that I would suggest if you're making one of these strong boxes is to put some holes in the bottom and just go ahead and bolt it to the floor like in a closet or something. Because otherwise, someone's just going to take this whole box and take it with them and find something to get it open. But if this is bolted to the floor in your house, especially with a lag bolt or something, you're not going to be able to pull it up out. And the only thing you're going to do is cut the locks, which means you're going to have to have special tools, you know, on hand. As you can see on the inside of this, I didn't get a ton of penetration, which is good because I can't really grind in there. So, I'm pretty happy with the way those welds turned out. We'll get them ground, clean them up a little bit, and go from there. But right now, I gotta open this door, guys. It's getting pretty smoky in here. All right, guys, got all the grinding done on these sides at least. Got them pretty smoothed up. Flip over here. That's another reason, like I said, I like these, these joints because you can see how you can kind of round them over and make a nice soft corner, which for something like this, you don't want a bunch of sharp edges and stuff like that. So we've got the grinding all done on this thing. Um, the next thing we'll have to do is make a lid for it. Now, so what I'm thinking for the lid is, let me set the camera down here. Um, I've got some of these door hinges right here, so I'm thinking something like this. Now, if you're using these door hinges, guys, you got to be careful because a lot of these door hinges you can knock the pins out when you're going to take a door off or something like that. So we're going to put both these uh, knockout sides going the same way so that you wouldn't possibly be able to knock them out with it on there. You know that way you couldn't get the lid off. But anyways. Uh, Take a piece of metal about like this. That's gonna need to cut down on anything. Uh, it'll sit on top of there like so. And then I'm thinking that uh, I'm gonna take a piece of this and cut it out and make like a spur that sticks up here on the front. And then cut a little circle, not a circle, a little like uh, piece out of there. And the door will sit down right over top of that, and you can lock it on the top side. So I'm gonna go and crawl up my door kind of get something figured out for that and we'll keep moving along. All right guys, so I'm going to attempt to use one of these old circles in this plate for the part the lock goes through just for the fact that I don't really like drilling holes. So I'm going to cut out this little shape here and that's going to be like the finger that goes on the front of the box for the lid to slide over top of. So I'm going to fire up the old uh, oxypropane torch and attempt to cut that out as close. All right, so we got that bad boy cut out, see, all the way. Now, take over here my handy grinder. Alright guys, so I've got my lid all marked out here on this plate. I'm just going to again go ahead and take the torch, cut that out, and then clean up the grinder a little bit. Get rid of my hinges and stuff like that on there. So. Clean those edges up a little bit with the grinder, get that slag and stuff like that out of there. Alright, guys, so I've got my lid cut out. 
And I went ahead and pierced this hole in here and then cleaned it out with a uh, square file just to kind of round it off, get rid of all the crap on the inside. So now I'm just working on getting it lined up straight and then I'm going to weld the hinges on the outside of it. So it's coming along pretty nice. All right, guys, here we've got her all done. Top side, back side. All right, I think the, the weld beads on the back actually came out a little better than on the front, but oh well, they'll all hold, I suppose. Um, I'm gonna clean it up a little more with the grinder, paint it, put the Dunn sticker on it, but uh, that was my demonstration of outside corners and kind of making a little box thing. But uh, please comment, rate, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys.